Well, I have never sought to raise a single penny on the backs of four murdered Americans. Yeah. So, I, 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 so to the extent that, that they would look uh, to me as some evidence of what's appropriate and what's not, there are two still, and even in a culture of hyper partisanship, certain right. things that ought to be above politics, like the murder of our four fellow Americans. Republican Congressman Trey Gowdy of South Carolina has a very important job in the Republican Party. He's the man heading up the scandalous House Select Committee on Benghazi. And earlier today, in fact, just this morning, he talked about that job with great solemnity. But here's the thing. The people over at the National Republican Congressional Committee, the organization tasked with electing Republicans to the House that Trey Gowdy serves in, they did not get that memo. Demonstrated by this fundraising email they sent out less than an hour before the congressman said those words. That email directs you to BenghaziWatchdogs.com, a website set up by the NRCC that tells you you can become a Benghazi watchdog right now, asking you to add your name and to, quote, help fight liberals by donating today. The site hails Gowdy as the chief Benghazi watchdog, who at one point today asked them to stop fundraising off the investigation. I cannot and will not raise money. But, you're, but the NRCC is, sir. I, I also advise my colleagues to follow suit, and I think I did so in a pretty unambiguous way. Not only is the website still up, but they are explicitly using Congressman Trey Gowdy, asking you to stand with him and the Benghazi Select Committee, and of course, contribute your money. Now, if you've been wondering why the heck has there been so much attention paid to Benghazi the last few days, it's because of what we call on this show hashtag Benghazi. Hashtag Benghazi is an immensely lucrative opportunity for anyone who can channel the hashtag Benghazi fever, as evidenced by the fundraising. The NRCC has been doing it, and others have been doing on it since last year. And by the fact that Congressman Wes Moreland tells the Washington Examiner's David Drucker that 206 House Republicans have asked to be considered for the hashtag Benghazi Select Committee. So they can all send out their own hashtag Benghazi fundraising emails. Not only that, it gives Republicans, well, something to talk about. Because as we've asked on this show, what the hell are they running on in 2014? Particularly now since the previous scandal they were campaigning on, the disaster of Obamacare is, well, actually out there quietly working, driving down the uninsured rate and getting people health care they so desperately need. And if you think this is some conspiracy theory I've cooked up about the crossfade between Obamacare and Benghazi, check out Fox News' programming on these two topics. As Obamacare kicks in and starts working, actually providing people with health care, Fox talks about it less and less, while sure enough, hashtag Benghazi returns with a vengeance. Joining me now is MSNBC <laughs> contributor Sam Cedar, host of Majority Report. I, it, the, <laughs> the fundraising thing today, I mean, what galls me is, what happens is if you poke fun or you ridicule or you have contempt for the, the gross obsession with trying to pin this on Hillary Clinton, this sort of hashtag Megazi, they get so angry and self-righteous. How dare you spit on the bottom. Right. How can you, how can how you can, talk about and, and there, I mean, give me an, uh, Give me a break. Give me a break. Yeah, I, I mean, watchdog Benghazi, I, 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 you know, I don't know what to say. I mean, I guess someone should start to, to submit a graphic with a sort of like a, you know, a bloodhound and maybe wearing a, you know. With that would be a, as classy. That would be as classy as what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. But, you know, this is the, um, and I think that graphic, uh, that graph shows really what, what the story is here with Benghazi. And I think the other thing that makes this sort of uh, perfect, I mean, because, you know, I remember uh, living through uh, the first Clinton administration. Administration yep. with Travelgate, with Watergate, yep. with Whitewatergate, Water, right. with Vince Fostergate, yep. with I mean, yep. it, it just went on and on and on. And the beauty of Benghazi for the Republicans is that you can never solve the mystery. They right. can have smoking gun after smoking yep. gun, but no one can even articulate to you what What's is the, the bullet is? or yes, what exactly. is the right. what it That's is right. that the gun supposedly shot at. Right. That's there, right. Nobody knows. What, what the scandal what the is, scandal so it can is. never be debunked right. because it changes. No, from time and to it's exactly just, right. It's just going to keep going and going, and it's going to take them through this election, and then it will come back after another year or so, so that they can gin up uh, their uh, their base again uh, with Hillary Clinton. So here's the big strategic political question. I think is quite interesting. Do Democrats participate this? This is DCCC Chair Steve Israel, who says if this were a fair inquiry, Republicans would have accepted our offer of balanced rules, that is 50-50 split. Instead, has become a Republican political strategy meant to raise money, excite their base. Um, we should have nothing to do with that, is the last line of that statement. Um, do you agree with him? I, I, I do. I, I mean, I, I think they, they, they shouldn't even show up. I mean, it's a joke. Yep. And, and the bottom line I is, agree look, completely. there is no, 
There is no convincing anybody who's interested in Benghazi at this point, whatever the mystery is, they're not going to vote for Democrats. I mean, this is a good opportunity for right. Democrats to, to actually continue ahead with an agenda and express the fact that while we're trying to pursue an agenda, yes. these guys are off with their Benghazi watchdog yeah. t-shirts, tote bags, <laughs> mugs, whatever it is that they're selling. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. I think it does at a certain point. I, I do think there's a disconnect between them understanding how it looks to their base and how it looks to everyone else. And frankly, the way the House is set up, they don't have, the, the, the folks in the House don't have much to fear from right. everyone else. And it's else. not even so much that they have too much to fear. All their incentive structure is built upon these type of things. Right. They are playing to a, 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 a very small but very sort of pure uh, segment of the population. That's what these people want. This is what's going to bring them out to the polls. It's what's going to keep uh, uh, Republicans in the House in office. And, and, and so for them, it makes total sense. Yes, the although here's is, the danger. Yes, the danger is the, 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 the pack of horses get away from you. And, and John, Rader, uh, John Boehner has been trying to kind of ride this this momentum and not let them get away from him. And naming a select committee is, it, Lord knows where it goes. Oh yeah, no, I think this is, but that's the that's the that's the perfect metaphor for what has happened to the Republican Party. Right. I mean, the, the, it has gotten away from them. Frankenstein is now running through the streets, right. and there's nothing they can do about it. Uh, the, it. It won't hurt them necessarily in the midterms, but it's going to hurt them long term. Long term. Yeah. And you know, and you don't want to go back to the day of Dan Burton. Shooting a pumpkin in his backyard. I mean, that's you know, you're not that far from that. Oh, I think we're past it. I think we're, well, I'm we're <laughs> selling you know tote bags. You get a tote bag, a Benghazi watchdog yeah, tote. It's, it's crazy. MSNBC contributor Sam Cedar. Thank you. Thank you.